So uh, I was thinking of uh, how how should we uh, plan the uh, the questions as well because students Sir, you are live now. might have some questions. Ravi, uh, can we start? Okay. Uh, good morning, all. Yeah, sure, sure. We can start. Okay. Good morning, all, and uh, happy Teachers Day to all. I, Professor Kausal Gaur, heartily welcome Mr. Ravi Chauhan, Dr. Priya Swami Narayan, Head Professor Vivek Dave, and entire FITCS staff and dear audience who are present for this webinar. Today we have a very talented and experienced speaker, Mr. Ravi Chauhan. He is going to take a webinar on polymorphic adversarial DDoS attacks on IDS using GAN. He is the one of he is the one of prominent alumni of Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology MCA program. He has been a brilliant student. He is from batch 2015 to 2017. He is pursuing master thesis program as graduate as research assistant from Ontario Tech University, Canada, and his thesis subject is generating AI-based malware attack using generative adversarial network. And one thing, his paper is selected in IEEE on adversarial DDoS attacks. Now I would like to request Mr. Ravi Chawan to take over the session. Uh, thank you, Kausal sir, for the brief introduction of my. Okay. Uh, yes. So let me just reintroduce myself. Uh, my name is Ravi Chauhan. I'm a PhD research assistant and a final year student in uh, uh, Ontario Tech University. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, healthy and fine. Uh, so uh, the topic of today's webinar will be polymorphic adversarial DDoS attacks on IDS using generative adversarial networks, or GAN, in in short. So I, I have been working with this for this topic for uh, past eight months. So let's start with the with the with the webinar. So these are the list of contents that I'm going to cover in this webinar. First will be the short introduction of AI. Uh, the next will be the type. Of, what will be the what what is polymorphic attack? Next we'll cover. Uh, what is DDoS attacks, how it works, and the type of DDoS attack. Uh, uh, following, followed by intrusion detection systems, how they work. And then we'll cover generative adversarial networks, how it works, the basic, basic model. And after that, I'm going to cover which, uh, what data set I've used, a, a short introduction of that data set. And then I will cover the the research that contains the model that I've uh, produced and the results of that. So let's begin with the introduction of AI. <coughs> so what is an AI or artificial intelligence? It, it's it's a technique that simulate human-like intelligence in machine that automates and perform some desired tasks. Uh, AI has been popular for past few decades and it, it's been used in various domains like game, games, recommendation system, logistics, transportation, and many more. A machine equipped with uh, artificial intelligence using uses various data sets uh, specific to certain domains and that performs uh, accordingly. <laughs> Next will be the, there are two important types of AI, first will be the narrow or weak AI and the general or strong AI. The AI that we are seeing in the in the recent recent in a recent time is basically a narrow or weak AI that's basically assigned to the specific task or that performs a specific tasks. Whereas general or strong AI is a is a Kind of AI that is not still in still in, uh, used or developed. It's basically a theory that a machine learning is equivalent to a human intelligence that can uh, reason, solve puzzles, make judgments, plan, learn, and communicate. So, as as I mentioned here, these kind of the name of different AI that were shown in various movies like Jarvis and, and Edit, these AIs basically 
just perform like normal human mind <coughs> next let's see what polymorphic attacks are so the polymorphic attack are type of attack that constantly constantly changes their uh, features so that they can bypass the det detection systems many of the common forms of polymorphic attacks are known as are viruses, worms, trojans, and key loggers. Polymorphic techniques involve frequently changing identifiable, identifiable characteristics like their file names, the type of en encryption they use, so that they can um, evade the malware, malware detection systems. <coughs> and basically, polymorphic polymorphism is used to evade pattern matching detection. Which relied by security solutions like antivirus systems. <clears throat> Next uh, will be the DDoS attacks. So basically, the DDoS attacks has two terms. First is distributed, and second is denial of service attack. So let's first see what is denial of service attack. It's an attack that uh, 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 temporarily really shutdowns or uh, unable uh, uh, network or a web service so that the genuine users could not uh, access that for a certain period of time. Now let's see a dis what a distributed denial of serious attack. So a DDoS attack is a attack that targets certain websites and online services the aim of ddos attack is basically to overwhelm the overwhelm the web services or the service provider with the more traffic than the than they can accommodate or handle so a ddos attack can be generated with a single attacker and multiple uh, bot systems that the attacker <coughs> so what what is slaves in this image so the slave is a machine that is compromised uh, um, and it it's influenced under the attacker so that the attacker can use the, the system to attack to generate the attack so uh, there are two types, two categories of DDoS attacks. First is the application layer attack, and the second will be the network layer attack. So as you can see in the this right side of the image over here. So the first is the HTTP flood attack, which is the type of application layer attack. An application layer attack is either carried out via, via DDoS or DOS attack, and it is responsible for the functionality of different uh, protocols that we use in the application layer like http ftp and smtp the second will be the network layer attack it's basically designed to target a network infrastructure and basically as you can see the in the second image <laughs> we are generating a a sync a sync flood attack that basically uh, send spoof sync packets to the target or with the victim next let's understand what the introduction intrusion detection systems and how they work so intrusion detection system is a network security or technology that is built for detecting various vulnerability or exploits again against various target application or computer uh, and ideas can be a software application or hardware 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 that monitors traffic moving to moving towards the network and through different systems and what I ideas does is basically search searches for suspicious activity known as threats and if it finds such threats, it 
will alert the system administration and administrator for, for for that particular time and it basically uh, informs the id personnel that the network intrusion may be taking a place so that the necessary precaution precaution can be taken in time <coughs> Well, let's jump to the generative generative adversarial network, which is the which is the important part of this uh, uh, webinar. So, a generative adversarial network and neural networks that basically generates a uh, desired output such as images, music, speech, or text. They are basically a machine learning system that can learn to mimic a given distribution of data, like as my as i mentioned such as images music speech uh, generator generator networks basically consists consist of uh, two neural networks first is the generator and second is known as discriminator so the the function of the generator is to generate new data similar to the expected one and it could be it could be, as I mentioned, image, speech, text, or any kind of data that can be generated. The second model is the discriminator. The discriminant, the goal of the discriminator is to recognize that if the generated data is original or fake, then it uh, predicts predicts and send the information to the discriminator so uh, to the generator so that the generator learns how to generate better fake data so that the discriminator not cannot distinguish it <coughs> so let's take an example of image to image translation if we want to convert an uh, image a daylight image to a nightlight image then we need to pass the data to, gen to, the, to the generator accordingly, right? Let's, let's take the example of this. As you can see, the generator here tries to generate a fake money and the discriminator will distinguish between the real money and the fake money. Then what the discriminator here will do is it basically sends the Uh, information about and about if the money is fake or not to the generator so that the generator can generate more better uh, more better uh, data so that it it will it could uh, fool the discriminator about if the money is fake or not right and finally what will happen is the discriminator will not spot if the money is fake or not, right? So here are the some of the applications of generative adversarial networks, like image generation, text to image synthesis, face aging, image to image translation, uh, video synthesis, uh, and high resolution or HD image generation. So if we, if we take an example of image generation, generated adversarial networks can be used to generate realistic image uh, from the sample images. For example, if we want to generate new dogs of new images of dogs, then we need to train the uh, generated adversarial network with the with the sample of images that consist of dogs. Uh, in, in text to image synthesis, we need to gen uh, we, uh, the generating image from the text description. So, text to image synthesis can be useful in the in the industry in, in the film industry, as the generator adversarial network is capable of generating new data based on some text text input. Uh, let's take an example of face aging, as we can see. There are some applications available in the in the Play Store and App Store that can uh, show us how how will 
with how will uh, the age will affect on our face <coughs> so the so the image to image translation video synthesis and hd image resolution will function as the same now it it is important because we are using ai technique in this research so it is important to use a data set to train a model right so i've used cicids data 2017 data set which is generated by canadian institute of cyber security they have developed this data set using 25 20 uh, using a behavior of 25 uh, users and consist of different protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, and SSH, and email, other email protocols. The reason behind using these data set it is, is because it is a based one and they, they consider certain criteria that are missing from cer certain previous uh, data sets, like a complete network configuration, complete traffic, available protocols, Attack diversity, feature set, and metadata. So these are the these are the certain protocols that this data set specifically follows, in which complete network configuration means that uh, this data set will have a complete network topology, including modem, firewall switches, and other other networking hardware. A complete network complete traffic means they have different users from which some of them are uh, act as a as a victim and some of them act as a real attack attacker as as, as i mentioned they have also uh, for, uh, have these have certain protocols like http https ftp and ssh apart from this that these Dataset also cons consists of various kind of attacks like a web-based attack, brute force, DOS, DDoS, uh, and other 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 attacks. Apart from that, that these dataset also consists of more than more than eighty features, so that we can use all the possible features in in the research now let's jump to the proposed method that i have used that i have developed to generate adversarial attack so there are three different models in this research first the first technique that here you can see is uh, i'm generating adversarial data attack data and basically attacking on ideas using that data right <coughs> so here as you can see in the in the in the image the generator accepts network attack data that consists specifically a single attack which is a ddos attack in a random noise so by combining these two type of data set the generator will at, uh, generate adversarial attack and combining with adversarial attack i am also considering benign data which is normal data that is not an attack data and i am using these two types to and sending sending them to the black box ids the uh, the ids will generate a result that if it detected an attack attack and then the discriminator will determine if the attack is successful or not and it will uh, send a critique to the generator so that the generator in next cycle could could uh, generate more better attack that is indistinguishable but that can evade the black box ideas so the next will be the, the result that uh, 
what will happen if, if uh, the model can uh, generate uh, adversary attack so as you can see in the graph at the beginning the generate the generator is not able to evade the ids because it started its training and initially all the attacks was detected detected by the ids as, as i mentioned here the discriminator will provide a critique to the generator so that it can generate better attacks as you can see here the generator is learning from the discriminator <coughs> and at the end of 100 epics as you can see here the generator successfully generated adversarial attacks that the, the that the ideas couldn't evade so after the this result we can we can say that generator generated DDoS attacks that that could evade the ideas now the next next here as you can see in the graph i have considered uh, training the ideas with the previously generated adversarial attack so that it can detect all the all the adversarial attack that were generated in the previous cycle <coughs> uh, after this uh, um, the as you can see the title of this research is polymorphic adversarial attack so after this model once the ideas learns about the polymorphic attack and uh, about the adversarial attack i've tried uh, to generate a polymorphic attack and for that i've uh, updated the feature profile of the previously generated attack using reinforcement learning so what what is the function of reinforcement learning is it basically learns by trial and error, error method and keeps improving uh, according to the function it was designed to so in this case i have designed the reinforcement learning that learns from the that learns from the discriminator and generates more better polymorphic attack by changing their signatures so as you can see in this graph, uh, as you can see in this graph, the green the green circle here is suggesting that this is the reinforcement learning engine basically, which changes the attack profile and tries to generate. Uh, Generate, tries to generate polymorphic attacks so that it it can evade the black box ideas next we'll, we'll next i'll consider the results that i got from the from the from the model so in this result as you can see there are four separate sections now let's first consider the section on the left hand side here which is known which as i mentioned here cycle one training ideas so the result here includes about the performance of the ideas as you can see in the y-axis it is a detection rate that means it's it's showing intrusion detection systems detection rate and the x-axis uh, there two different sections the first the the left hand side is uh, training ideas right hand side will be the feature update which will be the which will be the polymorphic attack so the cycle one here is basically showing training ideas initially <coughs> after training ideas it detects all the adversarial attack as you can see here 
it goes up to hundred uh, percent. So that that means after generating the adversarial attack and training it and train the IDS with all the previous attacks, the IDS could detect all the adversarial attack. Now, according to this model, I am I am designing a polymorphic attack. So as you can see here, initially the model learn, learned how how to uh, design polymorphic attack and after 100 uh, after training for 100 cycles the model generated polymorphic attack successfully and evades the ids now again i am trading the training the ids with the, all the previous attacks and once it detected all the attacks now again I am updating my feature profile for the second time and as you can see here it goes down again that means for the second time all the polymorphic attacks could evade the ideas now my main objective of this attack uh, of this um, research was to see that for how long an a polymorphic DDoS attack could evade an IDS, a trained IDS? So as you can see here, I have considered some of the some of the parts of the result because there were ninety eight cycles, so I couldn't uh, add all the, all the results in this, this presentation. As you can see here in this cycle number twenty three, training IDS, the IDS is, after training the IDS with all the previous attacks. It's it's still detecting all the attacks, but as you can, as you can see here in this feature update number twenty three, cycle number twenty three, that detection rate went up. That means only eighty percent of the attacks are evading the IDS after generating the polymorphic attacks. <coughs> as you can see in this cycle number seventy one the detection rate only only up to 40 percent of the attacks are successfully evading the ids and here in the in the result as you can see the uh, the uh, cycle number 98 training ideas and cycle number 98 feature update as you can see the the model that i've proposed is not able to generate more more polymorphic attack right so that means that at this point all the all the attack are going to be detected by by ids and the model cannot generate more polymorphic attacks so from the result i can confirm that the proposed model can generate significant polymorphic attack up to 90 cycles and it it's becoming weakened in the generating new version of attacks so from this result we can see that we can say that the attacks are weakening um, as as we move uh, move forward but uh, but still they are significant attacks because if a, a, a large service, a service provider like google or youtube gets 40 percent of attacks it they can they can still these kind of attacks still can still damage the the number of users right now the main question that i get from from my colleague is that why gen why generating why to why generate AI based attacks? So my answer would be we need to uh, constantly test the detection system with newer version of attacks, and the generative adversarial networks is the best uh, tool that can generate new version of attacks, so that we can be uh, prepared. For the for the future, 
kind of attacks <coughs> and we can analyze the performance of the ids and also we can uh, design and uh, design some new ideas for the future detection system so here i'm ending this i mean i think we have uh, gone too fast but uh, if, if we have any questions if anyone wants to add something on that i'm open to open to suggestion Hello. Yes, Ravi, it's done. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think it's done. Can we can okay. we cover some of the questions? If we, if we can get some questions from any of. Okay. Yes, uh, Ravi. <laughs> any of the available committee or the students. Yes, Ravi. Uh, we are uh, some questions uh, from uh, Vivek sir uh, as well as from our students. Okay. Uh, the first question is that uh, so I have numbered the slide. No, no. I that I numbered uh, the slide. So send me the questions. I just uh, um, uh, just speak the question and uh, please tell me the answer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Okay, the uh, first question that uh, can you explain the difference between monomorphic and uh, polymorphic D dots attacks? Polymorphic attack and monomorphic. Uh, monomorphic and polymorphic, right? Yes, the difference. So I think the term, as, as the term basically suggests, mono means we are. Considering only single kind of attack that that cannot change their signatures uh, once it once it, it gets detected, okay. then it's done. There is no new version of that attack. Whereas if we are considering polymorphic attack, that means we are constantly changing the profile of the attacks. Uh, once the it, the attacks get gets detected. Then again, we can we can change the uh, profile of that particular attack so that in the next cycle it it gets undetected. As as I show as I mentioned my results over here, as you can see here, I'm generating attack. Yes, and which is detected by the IDS. So in the next cycle, I am updating the feature profile, and the detection rate goes down. Again, I'm training the IDS. So that IDS detects all the attacks, and again I'm training training the model. So the, uh, I'm updating the feature profile so that the, uh, the detection goes down like that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, and the next question that is from our one student that is: Will GAN also be useful in other cyber attacks? Uh, yes, there are some research researches research papers uh, already available on the on the internet. <clears throat> Take a search. Uh, basically, basically the uh, attacks that they are developing using generated adversarial network are Android Android attacks. So I think there are various kind of attacks that we can we can generate from adversarial network. But I am I am currently on. The inner network security. So I'm basically considering only the network attacks. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, the next yeah. question from the faculty side: uh, That how intrusion detection system mm -hmm. and intrusion prevention system are different? Uh, how they are different with each other, and which one is the better, IDS and IPS? So, yes. Uh, so the simple answer would be the IDS only detects if something is going wrong with the network, whereas the intrusion prevention system are basically a, a kind of a software or software that basically prevents prevents the attack. So we can say that we uh, ideally we can we need, we need to use both of them because without detecting the attack we cannot 
prevent the attack right so uh, as you can see in the diagram that i mentioned uh, over here we have i've mentioned only the idea okay yes right so what this will do is only it will only detect the attack and it will uh, tell the it uh, the administrator that the attack uh, attack is going on whereas if we use the ips as well in, in the same scenario it will basically detect and prevent the uh, attack uh and now next question uh that ravi from our one student uh that question mm -hmm. uh that instead of ml based gan that is generative uh at azure network can we follow any other approach or algorithm for detection of free data yes. yes uh i think there are so many uh other uh, methods one is where variational auto encoders let me just bring up it variational yeah so as you can see here these kind of methods are also available that can generate the similar kind of attack but these are still under under research there are not many researches available with the auto encoder um, my idea was being the using the generator addition network was to because it's quite popular right now it's been 6 years that it's been developed and it's still under developing and there are so many research already done on using generator addition networks so that i considered using it uh, instead of auto encoders okay uh that uh, ravi the next question uh, that if ids itself is attacked then what can be the other attack prevents preventive methods are there uh so let me bring up bring up the results that I, that we got from the from the model as you can see uh, the best option is the ids and ips Uh, but uh, apart from that we can use the same model that i have prepared in mm -hmm. detecting the attacks because it's still it can, it's still retraining with the previous attacks as you can see here so using this model will also be i mean uh, this model will also be useful in the uh, attack detection and prevention systems okay and the last question uh, and that there are, still, uh, there are still some research going on on uh, how to detect detect uh, these kind of attacks using generative adversarial network so uh, if if uh, students have some queries regarding that they can they can read uh, uh, research papers that are already available on the internet uh, what i have done is i have done the same that i have reference some of the researches from the previously available papers and try to follow the method and just uh, change change them according to the according to my work okay uh, the next one that is uh, from our student that is ray patel and uh, the his question mm -hmm. is that how to prevent dos attacks at cdn can protect you against the dos uh to prevent dos attacks is basically uh what i can say is just we just need to uh update our detection systems that if we are using antiviruses so we need to constantly update the signatures like if if for example if uh, uh let us say i am using antivirus right so i need to constantly connected to the internet so that uh, if there's some newer version of uh, 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 algorithm that will uh, cover all the newer version of attack then it it will it will do that because we are constantly updating our antivirus systems right so by constantly updating the signatures of antivirus systems it will be safer uh, Uh, again dos attacks and uh, again again we are considering ddos attacks because dos attacks are not more popular than ddos attack because uh, what ddos attacks can do is uh, if i am an attacker i can uh, use 
multiple machines uh, from around the world and i can control those machi- machines and generate uh, ddos attack so uh, for if i want to uh, uh, gain control over some machine i just need to create a sp- spam link so that uh, if the user is not pro- uh, edu- well educated they can they can click that link so th- so that i can uh, gain access to that machine and i can generate the attack uh, using their machine not mine so we need to f- also focus on that that uh, whatever links we are getting in the email that are falling under, under the spam section we uh, we need to prevent on clicking them because most it con- contains some clickbait titles so that uh, users uh, gets attracted towards them and they are they always always tend to click on those links which are which contains such titles right so we need to also prevent those kind of things okay uh, thank you ravi uh, the next question from our faculties uh, that uh, will cyber crime in the coming years affect the hacker attacks aim at technology device of the internet of things yes uh, so uh, i have considered only the the attacker side so uh, if i am considering this model to that can generate the uh, adversarial attack so i can attack on multiple uh, devices like ies like uh, iot devices uh, or some other networking devices like a car that contains a network like if we take an example of tesla it's it's it, it's always connected to the internet right i can gain uh, access over some uh, satellites as well because we are uh, talking about network part right because if we are considering only the networking part the data packets will be the same for all the devices that are connected to the network right so yes uh, i think it will be significant because uh, these kind of methods are easily avail- available to the attackers as well and attackers are also improving their knowledge that how they can attack newer version of attacks using such methods so my contribution was regarding that because uh, to train the attacker as well as the as the the, uh, the designer that designs the uh, algorithm that can detect detect on the attack okay ravi uh, that uh, some student asking uh, that is uh, Uh, can you share your journey with pu uh, uh, i spent 5 years in the uh, parallel started started with a uh, bachelor's i wasn't sure what will i do after my bachelor's but uh, i was always wanted to gain more knowledge in uh, it sector and there are so many things i wanted to learn so i considered doing masters with the same university because it it was the campus was familiar to me and all the faculties was known though so i chose to do my masters in that and yeah it was a great journey i had a great faculty and uh, you know also good colleagues that i can share my knowledge with and i can gain i, I got so many I learned so many things from faculties as well as my colleagues. Uh, doing masters is not, I mean, it's that's not it. I struggled a lot. Uh, the first job that I got was easy, but after that, I spent so many, so many time, so much time in giving almost uh, over twenty five interviews, <coughs> and. after that after spending one year in doing uh, working as a software junior software engineer i wanted i still wanted to go in the cyber security part so i pursued that and came here in canada to learn more and i'm still learning okay uh, thank you ravi and uh, one more questions coming from the student side uh, that uh, cyber security 
is so advanced mm. then also how the hackers were able to hack the account of one of the most important person of india our prime minister that what we can do or what is your opinion about this uh, yes uh, the main thing is uh there are so many aspects in cyber security because he is he is the prime minister of india so so there are so many things that are known to attackers right because there's a term that uh i can share it with which is uh, uh social engineering which is an important uh term in hacking hacking part let me just bring it that on my screen to it basically learns what a person is doing and so that an attacker can can do whatever they want with the user right and so they are popular persons right so their social media handles uh maybe their email accounts are pub- that are available to a public right so an attacker is a part of public so they can do simple kind of uh, j- they can generate simple uh, spam links that can be and these kind of people they they they, they don't use their social media by themselves they okay. hire person or company to handle the social media right so they are not well educated if they are not well educated then they can uh, they can click on some uncertain or spam links and Uh, after doing that they they lose the control of that particular account <coughs> okay uh, ravi thank you so much yeah. uh, uh, that's from our side uh, thank you very much ravi for delivering such a informative webinar to our audience and uh, yeah. hope your webinar and uh, your knowledge share my contact can... info if, uh... yes these are my contact information if Uh, yes someone wants to get in that they can um, just keep a note and mm-hmm. if do do we need to uh, share this uh, presentation with the students or is it's okay uh, no 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 the the your presentation is available on fb okay so that is no worry uh, okay okay sure Okay, okay. Uh, that uh, i hope that your knowledge encourages the students to are pursue there any, the are there any more questions no 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 ravi Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Ravi, and uh, your knowledge encourage yeah. our students to pursue their their research in fine uh, cyber security. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, my you. my main motive uh, for selecting this topic is basically was basically that uh, we don't need to be master in cyber security. Just we just need to be aware how can we how can we uh, our friend Pete's. teach uh, others that how can we prevent these kind of attacks uh, if we we will achieve these then the cyber security i mean the the contribution that we will give to the to the society will be helpful to others that's what I, that's what i think and i'm still i'm still learning and i'm also pursuing some uh, regarding some certifications that can be helpful to me in the industry okay that's nice navi okay can you uh, stop sharing so so i can share the fit and link to the students yes yeah, sure 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 yeah here we go uh dear students and audience uh, here i am sharing the feedback link please dot this uh, feedback link and uh, submit your feedback uh, uh, before 5 pm today and uh, you will get your e certificate on your registered email id okay so that is the feedback link i are, are you providing the certificate to the students yes so e certificate will be provided okay Uh, uh thank you so much ravi uh, can we leave previously yeah, uh, yes sure sure i just wanted to wrap up this uh